But let's say that we have a screen here and there's holes all through this, okay? If it's a multi-deck screen, uh, then you'll have another layer down here below and it will have littler holes. And you can go on with this however many layers you want to. You start out with your coarser levels up above uh, so that for the most part, so you're not tearing up your finer screens below. As you get to smaller, finer holes, then uh, and this fall, falls in with anything. I've had some people want me to build them the other way around to make sure they get all the fine material out. Well, it's clouded because there's a lot of big rocks that you could get rid of first. Now, when we're doing this, and uh, I guess it doesn't matter. I can draw, I've been drawing black at multiple for these, but let's say that we have some round rocks here and we got the ones that fall in here and obviously these are a little bit smaller. And on our top deck also, sometimes it's not just screen. A lot of times on our very top, we'll have bars. So there'll be actual and the, the side profile of the bar could be something like a T so that um, or what you what you're ideally wanting is something so that when the rock comes through here, the rock will either continue on, fall off the top, or it will go below. So if you had another one of these as your bars across your shaker, the rock is either going to go here or it's going to fall down. If you have <coughs> a straight side or ones that are worn real bad, it'll wedge. So now you have rocks that are stuck up here. If you have rails, if you have uh, bars for your top deck. And the reason that people do bars for the top deck a lot of times, and bars are a real problem on a top deck also, because a bar is rigid, it's strong, and you're vibrating this thing, they really want to break loose. So ideally you would have some kind of a structure, and the structure is going to try and break loose, but your bars could drop into and you could let them move a little bit and replace them. There's, all kinds of different ideas, but there, you're any shaker, you're going to have some problems with things breaking loose. Perfect welds, perfect everything, because it's working hard. It's vibrating. That's what it does. And even at trouble, everything breaks. It all breaks. But the shakers are known the most for breaking. They also tend to break around the side. Usually there's a big bearing here and some supports that will let the shaking go from there. That's where you'll have an eccentric shaft that goes through side to side. Um, it'll actually, it won't be right in the middle of your top deck, generally it would be below it. But that's, uh, that's getting more into the structural side here for a second. But let's get back to our rocks. So we've got our rocks. Let's say, of course, to, to wash these off too, we need water. We're going to what color is water? Water is blue. I like using more colors. I had a blue one. There's a blue one. Okay, so we're going to spray water down here. And our water, it keeps on coming right on through. And at the bottom, we have a pan that comes out like this. And if we're taking off different sizes to go in different portions of our box, now we have an interesting thing that happens here is our bottom layer gets all of our first water. This one here is mostly dewatered. De if we take this to another pan, and this one here just to go on out and get rid of it, our water is going down because it's going to go through the screen. It's going to go through the first punch plate. It, your water goes down, it goes here. So now we have another size of material that we might take off and want to put through a different set of boxes. Sometimes they put them through coarser boxes for this part and then finer boxes for your finer material. And it's not so much the size of the riffles, while most people do change them, but the size of the riffles is not nearly as important as the fact of the material running together. You get easier to wash out the lighter particles without moving uh, pieces of gold if you're not having the 
uh, the bigger yet ones with it. The bigger light pieces will push a whole bunch of small material and so you're pushing pieces that might have gold in it off of a bigger piece. I'm not real concerned about getting I'm concerned about screening down to a size where the gold that's on the creek is caught. I generally like to do it all at once this way. Then if I was doing a secondary screening, honestly, I would, I would not use the separation between the two myself. I would just screen to whichever I feel, feel is a reasonable size for the creek. And I probably have two decks here and just use the one with the water, keep it simple. Then if I wanted to do something else, what I would do is come out here. We'd have our sluice. That's not sluice box. Sluice box is going to be black again. You have to keep your colors straight, John. This is just like grade school. Okay, so we have our sluice box. And then down below that, what I would do is we'd put in here um, another shaker screen and drop down through that and go into a jig or a smaller box or set up a side box on the sluice box itself, which is another thing when we get into sluice boxes. So right now we're just talking about washing material here. Now, uh, spray bar design is something that definitely makes a difference. There's some that I like, some that, uh, and we really, before we drop on this, this is working with a shaker, we have got we can either drop directly on the shaker, which is great for a test plant, or if you don't have brains or you don't have time to build one right. Um, for a good plant, you really should drop your material in a hopper above your shaker. And the reason you want to drop in the hopper up here, a couple reasons. One is it will even your feed out better. And why you need to even out your feed is when you're dropping directly on your shaker, it's shaking. If you've put too much material on it at one time, it will quit shaking. It will have to catch up. It's got a momentum of the shaking moment, whatever type it is, and it will sit there and it will not move right. You put too much material on it, it won't move right. Now, if you're dumping on one like this, you learn that real quick and you just feather your material into there. You make it work. It's okay, you're not going to die, but it's better if you can put your material of mixed whatever it is up here in your hopper. So we have all of our mixed material up here. Now, with our hopper, something that we think of a lot of times, and I started out with this idea, and a couple of them I built this way before I learned. And we have a side maybe comes back like this. And I built really pretty pipelines on these that went around the hopper and then you have these little places that spray out from, the, from around your hopper. Stupid design. Seems good at first. <clears throat> I built several like that. Seen them built lots of times. What happens is the blue stuff comes down here and it piles up before, behind your material. And it kind of washes over it and washes some in. But eventually, all of this, you get enough water in here and all this whoosh goes down at once. So it doesn't really do what you want. It doesn't make it feed nice and slow. It either builds up behind it and goes whoosh. You, the, what's in your mind, what you're thinking is that this water being on your hopper slick plate will keep it wet. This is all flowing, and well, it won't. As soon as you put material on there, wham, it's got a dry spot. It will suck up all the moisture that's on this. It will stick there, and it's in one place. So what you really want to do is not have our water coming in like that. What you want to do is build, which still, this is not a bad way to make a distribution of water around your hopper. You can, you can do that to get it where you want it. But you want to come in so you're more like this and nozzle it into your pile. So now what it'll do is it'll directly wash out material, mix it up, and it goes down. And the nozzle, as the material goes out, will get further and further back into your pile. And you can have a bunch of these nozzles. You might have some from the front or back side of your hopper too, some off the sides. But you, you basically don't want to water your hopper. You want to wash your material. 
the jet should be forcing into the material, mixing it up and making it move. So then it gives it a little bit of a feeding action. You can also, um, if you're really going high tech, you can put a feeder in here. You can have a pan feeder. One of the simple pan feeders, the plate goes back and forth. So as the plate moves back and forth, it, you'll have a separate plate underneath here, little sides that keep the water in it. But this plate will go back and forth. We just have an arrow going both ways. And what happens is when it comes back, the plate is essentially pulling out from all this material. So it pulls out and the material that was here just falls off the, the edge. And then as you go back under the material, this whole pile moves a little bit forward. So the ideal would be you'd have your place you're dumping in up here that's dry. You have this hopper and it, it dumps down a little bit and then your spray bar is right there and your shakers below it again. Now, while that's ideal for a making your plant, you notice everything I'm doing is getting up higher. So now our plant is taller, which makes it not an ideal plant, unless everything is coming to one place and we're over the side of a hill or something. As a mobile plant, which is what we usually build, the higher you get it, the more problems you have getting the material into it. So you have to have a ramp coming up to it, or you have to put your excavator way up on a pinnacle, um, or, you spend a lot of money on a absolutely beautiful apron pan feeder. But the one I want for my fantasy plant is going to cost a million dollars just for the parts to put it together before we start building it. So, so far I haven't built one like that, but it's really a cool idea. <laughs> um, the real downside to the shaker here, um, there's the arguments with maintenance, there is... But the real downside is when we have the square, jagged, flat piece of bedrock that's got gold stuck in between it. Because we throw this on our shaker and let's everything works perfect. It comes down here and it's probably two foot to four foot across here. And you throw it on your shaker and you know this is where the gold is loaded in but it only, the water sprays on the top. Anything that's loose kind of washes off the top. It gets shaked a little and comes off. And the stuff on the bottom gets beat against the screen and the other rocks in here, and it'll come off pretty good. But if there's crevices, which there are in the top that's holding rock, it never gets a chance to scrub that stuff off. And it just comes off the end here and goes, poop, falls back in your tailings. So that is where a trommel, being your other type of uh, screen here, we have a trommel, if you don't know, it's a round drum. And the round drum also has normally great bars or some kind of a discharge in it. But as you can see, since this rotates around, even if we put our square piece in here, it's going to get turned over a couple times. And as it gets turned over, that gold's going to get beat off of it. And so that's about as far as I want to go today. It's just sort of a general description of some of the ores that we did. And this may end up being two videos here, I imagine. But, and then this is the leading into shakers and trommels. And I don't know if I'll talk a whole lot more on shakers later, uh, but I'll go into trommels, which is generally what I build. And... Like I say, there's some advantages to the shaker. You get more yardage for the physical size of the plant, but it won't take all material. The trommel will take all material. And why is, why is this trommel? Let's say we have a eight foot diameter here versus an eight foot wide screen. This eight foot wide screen, all of this screen area by however long it is, is active. It's all available for stuff to come out. This eight foot diameter drum, now you think about it with pi, eight foot, it's actually 24 foot around. But you've got a little area about four foot long off in the bottom here where the stuff's actually sitting on the screen. So it can't fall through as quick. You can make it longer to make up for it, but your plant is gonna be bigger. So that's the downfall in the trommel. One of the things that people do is they do a, in quotes, trommel, which what I normally end up building is a scrubber trommel. And we'll get into that when we're discussing trommels. But 
um, they'll do a drum that does some mixing and cleaning to start with and then feed it into a shaker. But again, we do that up here, another, another 10 foot of rise, you know, it's just, you really build a huge plant doing all of these wonderful things you'd like to. And uh, some of them get fanciful. I may think and, or talk on some other plants and some stuff with shakers and anyway, that's, that's, that's the basic start of it.